Let us begin with a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every living thing has a beginning and every living thing has an ending. Those were the simplest words we could say as a parent, trying to find age-appropriate words for explaining death to our children. It's one of the truths of being human, that every living thing has a beginning and every living thing has an ending. This fall, we have been searching the scriptures, looking for stories that offer wisdom and courage for the living of these days. Stories about people of faith enduring long periods of time that tested their beliefs and challenged their very existence. Noah and the ark and 40 days and 40 nights of rain. The people of Israel wandering in the wilderness for 40 long years. And today, another story featuring the number 40, that number that signifies a long time. The stripped down story of the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness that is found in the Gospel of Mark. Mark provides the story at its most sparse telling. Immediately after he is baptized, that same spirit that had descended upon him as a dove on his baptism, this time drove him out into the wilderness to face temptation. Forty long nights in the desert. In this story, there are no details about the nature of the temptation, no clues as to what happened to him out there in that desert wilderness. And I think a bit about how these last seven months have felt to us. Kind of hard to describe what has filled our days. The diary feels a bit monotonous for many of us, day after day that feels rather the same. And now winter is upon us and there is no end in sight. But perhaps it feels like we are facing temptations. Temptations to forget not just what we used to do, but who we are. Temptations to give up hope, fall prey to our anxieties. Temptations to return evil for evil and let go of the good. A reverse of the good words offered in our benediction. Despite the temptations of these times, let us remember and take guidance from those words that remind us and send us out into God's world. Have courage. Hold on to the good. Return no one evil for evil. In Mark's story, we don't hear about what those temptations were for Jesus. And yet, even in the spare telling of the story, there's a glimmer of hope for us. That Jesus was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. That those wild beasts will not do him harm. And angels unseen offer protection. These days in which we live are so very difficult. There is a lot of loss surrounding us. The loss of activities, the loss of the ability to gather safely with friends and family members, the loss of jobs for many. The passage from Ecclesiastes tells of seasons in which we live and move and have our being. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And among those seasons listed a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to love, and a time for peace. I almost couldn't read a time to refrain from embracing, a time when what so miss most is simply a hug, a handshake, that touch between strangers and friends and families, and a time to mourn, for there is so very much grief. More than 2,400 Minnesotans have died of COVID. Sally Mortensen, who welcomed us to worship today, created a display on the communion table to give us a sense of the enormity of the loss, a bowl overflowing with sunflower seeds, with each seed representing the more than 225,000 people who have died of COVID in the United States. And so many others have died as well. Today we gather to mourn, to remember, to proclaim our faith, and to seek out hope. To know that while for everyone there is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to mourn, that joy will come with the dawn that there will once again be a time to laugh, to remember, and to hold fast to what was good so that our days on earth will be enriched and more purposeful for having known and loved, for having been known and loved by others who have now passed on before us. We will be reading names during communion, the names of church members and close family members of staff and people in our church community. Each name evokes a person, a story, reminders to us. I could speak about so many people who are named who shaped this church in important and faithful ways. I could speak about so many of the people who are being named, but I will tell just one today. He was a humble and quiet man, the last person named in our alphabetical list. Central's treasurer, Matt Ealing, wrote that Roger Zopfi's legacy can be seen every time someone enters this sanctuary, for he was a gentle and meticulous caretaker of Central Presbyterian Church. Church administrator Anna Sanchez wrote that Roger and his brother Bill were responsible for the current organization of all the facility systems, heating and ventilation, electrical, timers for the lights, plumbing, kitchen equipment. They kept meticulous records. And Roger created operations manuals that Central will likely use for decades to come. He had a hand in almost every building project during his time at Central, often doing the work himself. When Anna asks Bill, who did this or that repair or installation? The answer is inevitably, well, Raj did that. One of the real losses of this pandemic was that when Roger died, we could not gather here in the sanctuary to celebrate his life and to give thanks to God. But only in a small family group gathered around the graveside. So many funerals could not happen the way they should have during this pandemic with family members unable to travel, with groups in small clusters spread out around a graveside, with a minister trying not to shout into the wind, with family members holding up phones so that others could participate virtually. Today is a day to gather, 
to gather our hearts together. Today is a day to remember, to mourn. And today is a day together to find hope in the God of all the seasons of our lives. Last week, I announced to the session, and then we sent word quickly to the congregation that my time as your pastor here at Central is drawing to a close. With this news, we are beginning a season of farewells, and with that comes its own type of grief. It has been such an enormous privilege to serve as the pastor of Central. And when that end comes in January, I will miss you so deeply. But on this All Saints Day, we are reminded that farewells are not forever, that every ending is an opportunity for a new beginning. And most of all, most of all, that God is love. And if God is love, then love never ends. May that love of God embrace us today, wherever we are, and hold us close. Amen.